Well, here we are again. It's Doug McIntyre. And uh, as promised, I want to go through this uh, electrical drawing that I've created. And, and we're going to talk about uh, the code required receptacle spacing. That may sound kind of odd, but uh, our national electrical code um, is pretty dictatorial, or maybe prescriptive would be the right word, uh, about how to, uh, how to place receptacles in a residential setting. Um, it can be a little bit confusing, a little bit hard to uh, um, develop a consensus of opinion, but here, here's kind of an overview. And you know, like I said in one of my earlier videos, this is a uh, um, not a complete design, nor is it nor is it a uh, um, intended to be a replacement for a good licensed design professional or uh, um, or good licensed electrician. Um, I, this is copyrighted material, but you're, you know, just feel free to use it, show it to your friends, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So, uh, well, let's, 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 get, let's get started here. I'll, I'll, I'll give kind of a basic uh, overview. If you watched my YouTube video on, uh, on symbols, you'll recognize the drawing. I'll, I'll go ahead and zoom out, and we can get the, uh, the, the high above view here. We've got a four-story townhome. Um, and then one of the things I've done is, is this was kind of a learning tool for me as I was becoming a plans examiner and inspector. Um, I'd been a commercial engineer for a good number of years, but this, uh, this tool came in handy for me and just making me go through the code piece by piece to understand, you know, why we were doing things and just how it applied. And, and for me being the engineer that I am, just, just putting it on paper, helped it all make sense. So there's a lot of this, this one floor, you'll see a lot of notations. So I'll try to, you know, you can pause it and look at that and take some notes. It should be pretty complete. But on the other hand, remember, it's not meant to be exhaustive, just uh, informative and helpful. So let's just start with uh, zooming in here on our uh, second floor plan, because that's where most of the information is. Um, you know, one of the things that you'll see is uh, um, the... Uh, um, often you'll, you'll see a sliding glass door, and I included that one on purpose here so that it could be illustrated. Sliding glass door has a fixed panel, and then it also has a movable panel. In this one, it's actually backwards because the fact is the movable panel is usually on the inside, but let's not get too worried about that. I just anticipated a comment. So a couple things are going on. One, this balcony, they're required to have a, uh, an outlet and uh, has to have an in-use cover, BGFI, and weatherproof. Um, you know, all of those things. I usually don't get all that kind of detail. We'll usually define WP as meaning all of these things in, a, in a, an abbreviated drawing. So it's a little bit more schematic, quicker to read. But uh, for my purposes, I wanted to have this uh, totally, um, you know, kind of drawn out. And so you see the, um, the spacing that includes the fixed side of the slider. And you'll see that in NEC 21052A22. And they consider that part of the wall. And so you may have heard of this, but the notion here is, is that the maximum distance of uh, uh, along the wall, you'll see I've drawn along the wall, kind of as the rodent crawls, not as the uh, crow flies, um, but that's the way the measurement is taken. So the maximum distance of six feet for receptacles at any point along the wall. And that were to mean if you were to take an appliance or a lamp and set it on the other, they typically will come with a six foot cord you can set it down and you can plug it in anywhere on this wall without having an extension cord. The National Electrical Code seems to have a, a vendetta against extension cords, and, and probably for good reason, because many fires have resulted from extension cords. If you remember the movie Christmas Story and the classic, um, you know, 10 things plugged into one outlet, as often did happen back in the old days, and I remember that as a kid too, some pretty dubious... Uh, um, extension cord, double extension cord, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, the National Electrical Code is developed in such a way as to kind of rid us of that hazard. I mean, it still doesn't happen. But what you'll see, you'll see these dimensions that I've taken here, six feet from the door on on this opening from either side. Um, and and you'll hear me talking about openings. Um, they, they consider, for instance, this fireplace as an opening. That means the wall basically stops, and the fireplace is there. Um, a couple of other things. So you've got the six foot dimension from this opening. The same thing's true from this opening. The same thing's true from this kind of starting over place that is the side of the fireplace. 
you know, just crawling along this or you know, edging along this wall, you'll see the first outlet needing to be within six feet. But then the rule is 12 feet. If you put them 12 feet apart or less, that means you can meet that requirement of being no more than six feet away from an outlet anywhere along the wall. Now, I, I pointed out earlier some of these outlets that I show at 72 inches above floor for, say, a flat panel television or, you know, another appliance or something above counter. Well, those don't get to count because they're over five and a half feet. They don't get to count for your required spacing. So that's an extra one. You still have to have the other. So this one being here doesn't preclude that we need this one. Um, you know, generally when I deal with a homeowner, they're a little bit more willing to throw an extra one or two in there as long as it's not a difficult remodel where we find it is, you know, folks that are maybe running tract homes and trying to put them together as fast as they possibly can. You know, one more outlet makes it tough for a residential wireman to uh, make any money. Um, he, he can't really afford to just say, hey, let's throw another one in here. So he'll meet the bare minimum. Um, so uh, another thing to point out is, is you know, you, know you, you look at this. This is a stairway, and it's going down into this level below us. And then, uh, you know, it, it, I don't really know exactly. This is drawn as if it's a wall, but it could be a railing. Oftentimes that's a detail. You'll see there's a railing here, so light and air and, and uh, you know, can can move through that space into the downstairs easily. Well, there's a problem. That means you might not have a wall where you can put um, an outlet. So that's that's kind of taken care of in this, this requirement here that, uh, you know, if there's a railing there and you can't get one within 12 feet of the first one or in six feet of this, you have to put a floor outlet. Now, floor outlets are kind of expensive, and a residential wireman would most likely come in and maybe throw an outlet on this wall somewhere and that would you know be less than 12 feet from this outlet and so it's going to get covered in that in that regard i just threw that in there as uh, something that would be helpful that's one where i see a lot of um, homeowners and residential wiremen might fail is and the same thing's true of you know long fixed glass panels there's no place to put an outlet so the floor would be your only choice you know in our situation down here say this was glass panels all the way along this wall well this first one within six feet might have to be a floor outlet so something to keep in mind as you're laying out the outlets in your home. Now here's another situation. So here we have this fireplace, and this fireplace obviously is gas because you can't run a fireplace on a little 120 volt outlet. But still, um, uh, there needs to be an outlet here. Well, that receptacle must be accessible. It doesn't get counted as one of the required outlets by spacing. And here's a couple of NEC articles that point to that. And one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, that receptacle may need to be serviced. That receptacle, you know, the, the fireplace may, may need to be plugged and unplugged. Now, you know, I won't get into it now, but accessible is, you know, pretty fluid in our jurisdiction. Readily accessible is a, is a, um, a you know, code parlance you kind of hate to hear because, man, that, that means, uh, um, you know, you've got to be able to get to it without any tools, without any standing on anything or reaching for anything. It's 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 pretty uh, sometimes onerous. But uh, now here's another thing you need to know about spacing is here's a little piece of wall. You've got this opening here that's for the stairs going up, this opening here that's for the stairs going down. So how do we treat this area? Well, if you have a space of wall that's 24 inches or more, you have to have an outlet in it. And so that's what's being shown here. you got an outlet. It's at the normal height. Um, you know, this is this is a likely place for someone to set a like a you know table and a lamp, or maybe a small workspace with an appliance on it. You know, or maybe a, a you know it's a dining room, so maybe there's a a, a buffet there, and it has uh, the need for a warmer or something like that. But we want to avoid any extension cords across openings like up and down stairs. That's pretty hazardous. And so you see, you know, this kind of rhythm going through. Now another thing is, is there's a required outlet next to vanities in, in powder rooms and bathrooms. Now, that one's kind of a special thing. The, the code requires a 20-amp circuit now for the vanity GFIs in bathrooms. Now, that 20-amp circuit can be a 20-amp circuit that's connected to the GFI outlets in the bathrooms throughout the house, or it can be a 20-amp circuit that feeds just the light, the fan, and the outlet that's in this little powder room. Same thing's true of larger bathrooms. Now, it couldn't feed this one. This is considered outside, and so you couldn't feed that one from this 20 amp. It has to be on its. It has to be on a different circuit, you know, one more of a general purpose type circuit. Now, the uh, the kitchen is another animal, and I'm going to have the kitchen is going to get its own video. You can see there's a lot of detail here, and I'll do a, a YouTube video just for the kitchen because 
there, there's a fair amount of complexity to it, and it deserves that extra time. So um, I'm going to take care of that later. You'll see the GFIs, you'll see the 48-inch Max, etc., etc. Now here's another one. I created this condition on purpose. This is a condition between the edge of the counter and the door. Sometimes um, that area will get missed. Uh, again, if there's 24 inches or greater of wall space, there has to be an outlet serving that area. Very high likelihood something that would get installed there or stood there as furnishing that would need to be energized. Um, again, here's a, a back deck. It has an outlet on the back that's, that's required. Now there's another one I don't want to miss before this uh, video gets too lengthy. But for instance, over here at the garage, you'll see there's an outlet just on the exterior of the building here. The code requires that there be an outlet on the at grade level at every entrance grade level man door and there has to be front and back that's the back and then you'll see at the front here's here's this one and you'll see that's 21052E1 again in use cover GFI weatherproof etc that's all that's required on the front or the back of the house but that gives a workman an opportunity to uh, uh, work on things without having to get out a long extension cord you can plug in your Christmas lights whatever it is you, that you need Another thing to keep in mind is the, uh, this is an unfinished storage area. An unfinished storage area requires a GFI in it. It doesn't have to be on its own circuit or anything along those lines, but it is a required outlet. Now here's another one I, I want to bring up. This is uh, not uncommon in these in houses these days, say a wet bar in a lower level. Now you're not required to have over-counter receptacles for this wet bar. Uh, like like is driven in a kitchen, but if you do have them, every outlet that's within six feet of any edge of the sink, not from the middle, not from the drain, not from the spigot, but from the edge, they have to be a GFI. And you know, the ones that get caught, for instance, are this one on, on the back of the counter. People don't think of that one. Oftentimes, maybe there's a GFI that is uh, placed on the uh, end of the counter. You know, maybe just below the edge. Well, that one has to be GFI as well. Um, this one along this back wall, it has to be GFI. It's within six feet. Now, here's something interesting. When, you know, you've got a situation here. There are required receptacles here, but not because of the bar. You've got an opening here. You've got an opening here. So you have to meet the 6 and 12 rule, just like we've done everywhere else. So those are the required outlets. And these outlets, as long as they're below 5.5 feet, will meet that requirement. I saw a pretty interesting argument amongst... Uh, um, inspectors the other day about whether that was true or not and what won the day is is they, they do count and uh, so uh, pretty clear on uh, this being good instruction for you. Um, again this the, you know here's the edge of the stair so you've got your 6 and 12 on around for this opening the same kind of thing along here so you know you can see what's happening the code is basically saying let's stamp out um, <laughs> let's stamp out uh, uh, extension cords. Now here's a uh, here's a little you know what they call a Juliet balcony, um, as in Romeo and Juliet. So um, code uh, in, in a lot of jurisdictions is, they're required to have this outlet here. It's uh, it is what the code says. The bedroom the same thing. You've got your six and twelve. You've got your closet door. So you've got an edge on either side. You begin your six and twelve. Now, of important note, you'll see here. You know, in the last video, I pointed this out as a split wired or half. Um, basically half switched outlet well that outlet will count for the spacing the 6 and 12 spacing as long as part of it is switched and part of it is not so make note of that if this was entirely switched then there would have to be another outlet next to it that was unswitched now moving on here you'll see there's our vanity outlet that's required um, here's another situation that's important to take note of in a hallway 10 feet or in, in length or over only required to have the one. The idea is, is you can plug in your appliance, your vacuum cleaner, whatever, and you can do your work. And uh, a 25-foot extension cord will get that done, and it's not going to be a permanent installation, but you at least need the one. Now, you've got uh, a washer-dryer. In a, in a washer, you have to have a dedicated circuit for your washer. If this was a larger room and there were several 120-volt outlets, they could all be on that circuit with it. Now the dryer, here's a 220. Now you can see if you watched my last video, you know that is not the right symbol. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fix that symbol really quickly and give us the right one for the 220 volt. It has that third leg. Um, and that 
that just like any range circuit or anything like that that has to be sized for the load that's going to be on it um, let's keep moving on down into the restrooms you can see the only required outlet in this master bath are going to be the vanity it's arguable that there might need to be one on both ends of the vanity um, talk with your local authority having jurisdiction and see they're not required in closets um, again a small Juliet balcony there is an outlet there and those are some of the basic required 120 volt outlets I don't think I mentioned the garage the garage is necessary to have an outlet and they have to be GFI protected um, in the 2014 code that's actually going to get bumped up to where there has to be an outlet for each bay and there's some argument about how how that might work can they be in the ceiling yes or no do they have to be in the wall do they have to be dedicated etc etc again ask your authority having jurisdiction as 2014 comes into force um, another interesting situation um, worth note for instance you know landings for um, stairways at this point uh, neither the in 2011 nor the 2014 code require a landing to have an outlet um, if it's large enough it might make sense to do so but the code isn't going to require it and then um, moving to, moving on towards any other required again here's some large landings now this is a, a note that I that I made for um, for people that have a home that has a large foyer this just happened to be labeled foyer by this particular architect and so they're considering this a foyer now if that's over 60 square feet then each three foot unbroken wall section has to have um, has to have an outlet on it so imagine a uh, a 60 square foot foyer with several you know four or five six foot walls each of them has to have an outlet and that was new in the 2011 code and is being enforced in most jurisdictions well that's a quick overview of the 120 volt outlets required um, also a mechanical room if you have a mechanical room in our particular instance um, I don't think we have a mechanical room in this particular area but if we do have a mechanical room, then just like our unfinished storage, a GFI outlet on a general purpose, um, on a general purpose circuit will suffice. Um, if if there's other devices in there that are larger, well then they need to be um, on that circuit. Well, I'm going to take a break now and leave you with that. That's a general overview of the NEC receptacle space spacing for your home, and hopefully that's been helpful. Um, don't forget to uh, uh, hire a good electrician if you are uh, feeling at all uncomfortable and uh, at the very least get a consultation and work with your regional building department. Take care.